this is an important one. At least it was for me. And it, it really stemmed out of my own inquiry um, to that big question mark of the past. Because us astrologers, symbolized by the planet Uranus ruling the planet, the, the, the sign of Aquarius uh, in astrology, are so solitary and lonely many a times. We feel so different and we become so autonomous. We are born loners a lot of the time, but, we, but yet we like to find our, our alternative family, our group, our clan of uh, shamans and, and mystics. And often we cannot just go to the library or find the information as easily as we could if it was just another trade. And we don't know what a great lineage we are part of and how that lineage has contributed to shaping the very world that we live in today. So a few things that I would like to address together with you tonight is a what is this age of Aquarius that we are stepping into that is dawning upon us as Isaac Newton used to say. And secondly, how did astrology contribute to our society in the past? How indeed is it contributing today? What is its role today? And what is the primary mechanism that all sacred arts are based on? So before I even start this, I want to thank, I want to thank my teachers and I want to thank the people who have helped me build what you're going to see. First of all, my teacher of evolutionary astrology, Maurice Fernandez. Um, secondly, the great mage, Rick Levine, that uh, provided both inspiration and assistance over transatlantic calls in gathering this information together as well as the marvelous Chris Brennan that has the most encyclopedic knowledge of the past that I have seen with a living astrologer to this day, and two very important people that initiated this quest within uh, me, Jan Erving and Andrew Rotrit, which are two researchers of the occult and mystics and how it all got molded together and fused into what we call modern civilization. So. Here we go. Can anyone think of what of all of these historic famous figures have in common? Abraham, Moses, Socrates, and the great Greek philosophers, Plato, Hippocrates, the father of, mo of modern medicine, and Pythagoras, the father of uh, geometry and trigonometry and 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 uh, everything that uh, we now know as the musical notes and and uh, the musical ladder. Ptolemy, that's really the father of science, and Copernicus, the great innovator. Galileo, the uh, rekindler of truth and Kepler, the father of modern physics, Newton, the last of the great mages, and Jung, the father of modern uh, uh, psychology. What do all these figures have in common? They were all mystics. Many of them indeed were practicing astrologers. We are talking at the time that the age of Aquarius dawns upon us, maybe even already shone upon us. We are at the morning of the age of Aquarius. What is the age of Aquarius? We've been hearing about it for so long, but what is it really in its significance, in its spiritual significance? It is about the quickening the quickening of walking forward into a future in which mankind has the liking of God, that we become 
immortals ourselves, so to speak. That knowledge that was once known, but then was forgotten, returns from the heavens and is poured upon the land. But what is an age? To understand what an age is, just if some of us do not really understand it yet, I want to mention that we revolve, that is, the Earth revolves around what is called, in Latin, the axis mundi, the axis of the world. And what you see in the middle of this picture, long uh, 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 exposure picture, photo, is the North Star, Polaris. And all around it, we see the sky revolving. The Earth, as much of you know, as many of you know, is tilted, tilted on its axis on a degree of 23.5 degrees. That creates the seasons on Earth and the difference between the North and the South uh, parts of the globe. And that tilt makes the sky digress by one degree every 72 years. That means that if you and me would be sitting outside in nature, on the 21st of March, 4,000 years ago, we would be looking at the eastern horizon at 6 a.m. and seeing zero Aries on the eastern ascendant. We would be seeing the, uh, um, the Aries constellation rising in the eastern sky. But as the years passed, the sky started moving backwards. It always had moved backwards at a rate of 70, of one degree per 72 years, which meant that every 2,160 years, it moved a whole sign backwards. So let's say that from the age of Aries, after 30 degrees, it moved in to do or digressed into the age of Pisces. And about 2,160 years later, it started moving in from Pisces back into the age of Aquarius, in which we are today. Now, a great cycle or a big year is consist, consists of 12 ages, which are roughly 26,000 years or 25,920 to be exact. So this is the zodiac as we know it, and what I refer to as is called the procession of the equinox. But let's put it a minute, not in a circle, but like this so we could better see it. And I want to take you about 6,000 years back in time, um, and maybe even more. Let's let's begin even even further than that. Let's you know modern researchers say that this moment that I'm referring to now happened thirty to thirty five thousand years ago. The more conservative estimate is about ten to fourteen thousand years ago. And the moment I'm referring to is a critical, pivotal moment in the erection of modern civilization and the uh, growth of mankind as a species. And I'm talking about the move between being hunter-gatherers, following the food and the water all through the year, to a society that can remain in one place throughout the year and consistently grow and cultivate food throughout the year. And in order to do that, in order to create agriculture, we needed a very certain element, and that was timekeeping. And we began to keep time by looking at the heavens. 